this awesome looking green insect is called jungle nymph and this is actually a third generation of these guys that I that I raise in my care I have a bunch of them right here and today we are going to build just for them the biggest glass enclosure I ever built I'm just gonna put her back into her temporal enclosure you see here I have three females, one, two, three, and also a couple of small ones, but I'm not 100% if they are female. I'm not 100% sure if they are female. And over here I have a bunch of males, you see. This clump of dried leaves, you see it is not a clump of dry leaves. These are actually jungle nymphs and one fell down. I had many more of them, but I gave them away. And these are the ones that I decided to keep. So three females. This one is almost adult, while these you see... Can you stop pretending that you are dead? She's not dead, but when I was taking this one out, this one fell down and ever since then it was pretending to be dead. But there is another one and you see this is um, a small one, but I think that this is a male and this is also a female. So at least I have three females. Maybe more, but I'm not 100% sure because I think that there is another nymph inside, but I need to look for it. Anyhow, I already built a huge enclosure. I said it actually wrong. We are going to set up the enclosure in this video. We aren't going to build it from scratch. Let me just make room. Hopefully I will be able to put it here on the table. That will be a challenge on its own. It is right here. And also you may notice that I cleared this area. I'm starting with the peldarium slowly but surely. <clears throat> Look at this. I can barely lift it, even when empty. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I see that it doesn't really look big on the table, but it is huge. Just compare it with their current glass enclosure. See? <laughs> this is beast. This is the beast. And the biggest problem was to make the... Oh no, cannot open it because of these cables. Okay. If you're a regular Dark Den viewer, then you know that uh, these enclosures are my design. I custom 3D print uh, these plastic parts, these black parts, and I also build the whole enclosures by myself. So the weak point of this build is actually this small pin that enables door to open and turn. You see this actually goes over here. So when you lift it, you see there is that pin. And that is the actual weak spot of the enclosure because that often breaks. If you open the enclosure and if you push it too far away over there, uh, the pins here and here will break. The reason for that is nature of 3D printing. Uh, when you are 3D printing, you are actually doing layers of plastic on top of each other. This part is being printed like this and layers are being laid like this, you see, in th this motion. And then when it comes to this pin, uh, it was actually a layer of pin on top of layer of pin in this direction. So the connection that pin had to the base of this structure was really weak. And when you push it, it would break. But what I do, actually something that a lot of you uh, suggested in the comments. Instead of printing like this, I printed this part like this. So now this pin is not being printed like this. I mean the orientation of layers is not uh, vertical but horizontal. So now there is a lot of strength to this, you see, I cannot really break it no matter how hard I push. And therefore, now with this huge door, it is no longer an issue. It wasn't an issue with these smaller enclosures because the door isn't really, aren't really heavy. But this door, this is huge and really heavy, so just opening it would cause these pins to break. But now, thankfully, the problem is solved. But if you solve one problem, often some other problem will arise. And the problem here was, you see this handle that I use to lift the door and open it. This is now being, instead of being printed like this, it is now being printed like this. And now the same problem occurred with this handle like it occurred when I was printing this pin like this. Therefore, when I tried to open door for the first time, you see that handle just broke off and I was forced to glue this uh, bigger piece of plastic that is currently really ugly, but it serves the purpose. I just glue it over there. And learning from that mistake before I even tried to use this handle, I glued this piece of plastic underneath so it is more sturdier and now it works. 
I think that won't be an issue for these smaller doors, but for these it was definitely an issue. So now basically, even when 3D printing these parts, they are sturdy enough and maybe I can start doing them for, for sale, I don't know. We'll see, but I'm really satisfied with the result. Just small change and uh, the sturdiness is improved. But um, enough of that, let's actually bring our attention back to the jungle nymph. When I said, oof, she is kinda being mad. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, come here, come here. You can stroll on the table. Fun fact when it comes to jungle nymphs, or uh, the scientific name is Heteropteryx dilatata. They are insects that lay the biggest um, egg out of all insects. I actually have some eggs over here and this is it you see this is the biggest insect egg in the world and you see some cool markings on it i don't really know what is the purpose of these markings but they are looking really really cool at first i thought that the egg will open on those markings but actually the nymphs come out of this front opening you see this just removes and the nymph goes out so apparently these markings serve no purpose except from looking cool to us humans. Interesting stuff, right? I'll let me bring that back and let's start setting up this huge enclosure. I will try to open the other door if I can find enough room for that. And I need more light over here. This will do. <laughs> you see, I already did the background and I silicone it to the back. All that we need to do is put some substrate, put some branches for climbing, uh, add some leaves for them to eat and move them inside. Pretty simple stuff. But after that some major work is needed because I need a spot to put that enclosure. And what I was thinking, I was thinking to move this enclosure here, remove this shelf and then move this shelf to match uh, this shelf and then the, the height from here to here will be sufficient for that big enclosure. I think that will work out pretty good. Here I have substrate needed for the enclosure. I'm not going to use all the substrate, but just a part of it. And this is, you know, sand for the texture. <laughs> the reason why this part is so tall, it is because I wanted to make doors not too big, because if I had this edge lower, then that would mean that uh, door need to be taller and therefore heavier and then therefore the strain on the whole door system would be greater and I didn't know if it will hold uh, these doors. But so far so good. The dimension of the enclosure are 50 by 35 by 83 I think, I'm not sure, something like that, 82, 83 centimeters of course. So it is just like my other big enclosures except it is much taller <laughs> but i will let jungle limbs to breathe as much as they want inside so therefore they will need a lot of space i will put some branches inside i have them right here just need to measure it a bit break it and this should fit nicely inside yeah camera stopped of course i forgot to put the timer on so I can hear when the camera is about to end. This camera here records for only 30 minutes and then it stops. It often makes a sound that it stopped, but the problem is I now have it connected to a separate display over here. So I have the bigger picture, but the downside of that is it no longer makes beep when it stops recording. So I need constantly to check if it's recording or I need to put a timer for 30 minutes and then remind myself to press record once again. So I don't know what, what the camera missed, but hopefully it was all right. Let's just continue. This smaller branch will just go like this. Oh, nice. This is actually pretty sweet. But I will need a few more. Thankfully, I have big stack. Everything intertwines nicely. I like this. Now, you know that we need to have live plants inside for them to eat. Uh, more precise, raspberry, I think that's, that's the name of the plant. Actually, the leaves. They eat the leaves. So they need to be put in the water because if you just put the, the leaves inside, it would just dry up and they would start because they don't eat dried up leaves. They need fresh leaves. Therefore, you need to put the branch inside of water and I will have this thing that covers with this although this will look really bad maybe I will take something smaller just a second I found something more discreet and also on top of that we are going to hide it with some hot glue and dried up moss it's gonna drip the hot glue on the on the top lid and fix it like this 
More on this side and also on one side because I think that only this will be exposed. <laughs> Not the best of my work but it will work. So I just squeeze that in this corner and also hide it a bit with more substrate. It is not that bad. The ultimate sand for the texture, it will go everywhere. I can actually blend this with the sand, you see? Now the transition between moss and the substrate is pretty, pretty well made, you see? You don't even spot it. Now some leaf litter and we can add the greenery. One random scatter. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and actually I want to add springtails. Yeah, definitely need those guys. And isopods wouldn't be a bad idea, but I'm kind of afraid that they will eat the eggs or harm the eggs. So I don't think that I will put them inside. You know what I can put inside? Some roaches, right? That would be cool. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I won't do that mistake twice. <laughs> and now the green stuff, you see. This is the stuff that they eat. It would be cool if I could put uh, different green stuff inside bars, they would just eat everything. Ooh, this is looking so nice now. <laughs> now the most fun part, adding them all inside. The big green female will go first, she is the main star anyway. So you can just go over there. <laughs> now she looks tiny in this enclosure. She was filling up half of this enclosure, but in here, Tiny! Although she didn't reach her maximum size, she will actually grow more. I mean, she will molt one more time and then she will get wings and then she will be an adult. The smaller ones can also go in. There. And you. Okay, the females are inside. Sweet. Smaller ones. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe this could still be a female. Hmm. She's lacking one leg. Oh, poor girl or boy, whatever she is. One grab on that leaf. There we go. <laughs> I will also dump the eggs inside, but these aren't the eggs from this female. As I said, this one is not an adult. These are actually the eggs from the old female, uh, their mother. She died a long, long, long time ago, but eggs take even longer periods to develop and to hatch. Now it is time for males. This one is almost an adult, okay? <laughs> He's crazy crazy and mad. As you can see, males, they don't have a green coloration and also they are much slimmer and yeah, just different looking. Okay, go there. When they mature, they actually get wings, but with their wings, they can actually fly a bit. I mean, not really fly, but uh, glide a bit. Females cannot even use their wings. They are just a cosmetic purpose. They have a cosmetic purpose, I guess. Come on. Before you fall once more, he's technically her boyfriend because he's the biggest out of all males and he will mature first. So therefore, yeah, you know, bim bam boom. <laughs> I will just take a hand load of these guys uh, uh, and release them in. <laughs> Oh, but look at this. This is also a female. It seems that I made a mistake. This looks more to be a female than a male. You know that a while ago I separated all the males from the females, but it appears that I made a mistake, an honest mistake. Go, my friends, go. And it seems that this one is as big as this one, so maybe he will mature first. We are going to see that. Actually, we won't because we won't be able to recognize them. <laughs> and also this one looks to be the same size as this one and that one. Okay, there will be some competition. <laughs> but the enclosure is looking really neat with all of them inside. I should add another cup and put more branches, more green branches in that corner to fill this area. But not now, not now. I need to take this last baby. And with that one, we can call this rehouse a great success. And where are you going? That is kind of dangerous, you know? Go on the branch like that, yeah. Also, this one is climbing a bit. Even though this is such a simple enclosure. Come on, what did they tell you? Uh, it is really beautiful. And alive with so many jungle nymphs inside. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, I'm going to close their enclosure now and then we are going to free up the spot on the shelf for, for the enclosure. Oh yeah, that is going to be a project on its own because redoing this won't be an easy task. First, I need to remove these two enclosures 
then I need to pull this outside but I won't be able to pull it because you see this one is behind this which means that I need to push this whole piece of furniture back there so I can pull this out it won't be easy I will briefly push this out of the way yeah now we have area to work with mantids go here just temporarily because this enclosure is for them i just need to set it up but that will be soon in the video then this old jungle leaf enclosure goes out and that goes down here all right chips temporarily will go out but his enclosure will go back on the same spot and now i can figure this out maybe i can just oh this will actually be far easier than i initially thought i don't need to move this yes okay okay i just need some tools and this will be an easy operation no problem As I'm finishing this project, I just want to remind you that this Sunday I will be attending the Terra Plaza Expo in Budapest and I will have a stand there. Um, I'll be selling some stuff and I will also be giving away a limited amount of tarantulas from my first exec. I'll be posting more info about it on my Instagram through this week, so make sure to check it out. See you there! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Basically like nothing happened. Uh, let me bring the nymphs. Oh, this is heavy. Not as heavy as Linda's enclosure, but still pretty heavy. And since it is taller, it is kind of wobbly. Gently, gently. Okay. Oh. There we go. Like a glove. <sighs> nice. Check it out. Since the enclosure is so tall, the bottom of it, it is a bit in the darkness, but I don't really mind that. It is not too much. And to open the door, perfect. The other one, oh yes, nice. And once I put the proper enclosures here and here with proper lighting, uh, then the light from these enclosures will also shine with this enclosure and uh, the bottom part will be a bit brighter than currently is. But what do you say? Is it good? Was it worth the trouble? I'm so glad that these girls and guys will have such a big area, such a big space to move around. And now looking at it, I'm, I think that I should add a couple of more branches here. And yeah, basically this part is too empty. I definitely need to add a couple of more branches so they can move around uh, more freely because um, they will grow and they will be bigger and then they will need more more space more empty space but for now this is great this is excellent it appears that only this small guy is munching on the leaf while all the others are just hanging there doing nothing and also it seems like the other females got a bit more green tint now since i moved them in here huh <laughs> interesting thing but anyhow i'm so satisfied are you satisfied i hope that you are i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did Make sure to thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to Apple or Monday. So see you again in a week. Bye.